Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for another great looking, simple, practical woodworking project. I especially like this wooden doormat because it's just so unique and it also makes a great gift project. I'm no expert on this, but I think this might be something that would sell well at craft shows or online. It's also the type of project that you could probably figure out ways to batch it out pretty efficiently. I'll be able to build the entire project out of this one two by six redwood board. It's eight feet long and there's gonna be very little leftovers. I picked up this board at the local Orange Box Home Center for 25 bucks. Redwood, redwood is really an amazing species of lumber. It's a good choice for outdoor projects because it's naturally insect resistant and it holds up well to the weather. And this is why it's used so commonly in building decks. In fact, my entire house is framed with redwood studs because it's also fire resistant. I'll square up one edge just by shaving a little bit off to remove those rounded edges. So with a stop block set up on my miter gauge, I can cut out the lengths of all of these slat pieces. And then I can rip all of the slats out of those boards. I also want to point out something because sometimes people confuse ancient old growth redwood forests and giant sequoias with sustainable forest crops. Commercially grown and harvested redwood is reasonably priced and it's one of the most sustainable building materials you can use. Redwood forests have never been larger and are thriving due to really strict timber management regulations in California. And with all of those slats cut, I can set up my drill press. Uh, having a drill press is gonna be pretty important for this project. I guess you could maybe drill all of these holes by hand, but I think it would be really difficult to get them all perfectly aligned. I'm gonna be running a 3 16 inch diameter steel rod through all of these holes. So I'm using a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than that to just make it a little bit easier to slide that rod through all 14 of these slats. I've set up this stop block about two and a half inches in on each side. That exact measurement isn't really that important, but I want it to be the same on each side of the board. And to help keep everything consistent, I'm marking an X on one face of each of these slats, and then I'm gonna keep that face against my fence for each of these holes that I drill. That'll just make sure that they're consistent just in case that drill bit isn't exactly centered on the edge of that board. Whenever I talk about the tools you'll need to set up an entry level workshop, I never include a drill press, but it's one of those tools that is just, just barely doesn't make the list. You can certainly get by for most projects with just a handheld drill, but there's uh, some projects that you really just need the drill press for. There's no other way I could really drill these holes accurately on 14 boards without it. And by the way, I do maintain a list of all the tools a beginner woodworker will need to set up a shop. It's a free list you can download over at mytoollist.com. And in fact, you can get all of those tools for under $1,000. I think that surprises a lot of people that you can actually get started with a modern power tool based workshop for less than $1,000. I went to the hardware store and picked up a bunch of these rubber faucet washers. I guess they're actually neoprene. They're an eighth of an inch thick. They're gonna make great spacers between these slats and they seem to last forever.
It's a little tricky threading these steel rods into those holes. Okay, I think that's gonna work. I think what I'll do is, last time I made these, I made a round over on the top of each of these, but I think it might look nicer just with a chamfer, since everything else is gonna be kind of square on here. For some reason, roundovers to me are starting to look, and maybe this is just me, but roundover edges are starting to look a little dated. Is that my imagination, or is this just, am I overthinking those? It's just because I've made so many roundover edges in my life, I don't know. I wanted to temporarily assemble everything here just to make sure nothing weird was happening and everything fit together right. You could end the project right here and I think that would be a pretty nice little doormat. All you would need to do is instead of these steel rods just get some all thread and then you could just cap off the two ends with some nuts. And I'll cut the rods down to their exact lengths using a hacksaw. I thought it'd be a good idea to stain these now before assembling the entire project. So I'm gonna apply a coat of Redwood Deck Stain. This stuff seems to work really well and it looks nice. It's thicker than most wood stains. It kind of goes on more like a paint, but it's still transparent so that you can see the grain of the wood. And with all of those dry, I can go ahead and thread these all together. Hey, before I finish this up for the day, I wanted to invite you to sign up for my free award-winning monthly newsletter. It gets sent out the first Friday of every month to over 270,000 active readers just like you. It's really a passion project that I just love writing every month. In it, you'll get the latest in woodworking news, you'll get downloadable plans, learn about tools, participate in an ongoing discussion, see what other readers have built, and submit your own projects. Plus, I always include a personal essay on woodworking philosophy, new observations, or just hot topics, all with the intention of sparking a passion and helping you realize your own woodworking goals. Sign up today over at notesfromsteve.com. Now I can cut out the rest of that board to make the frame that the slats will set into. First I'll cut these down to their lengths a little bit longer than I need, and then I can rip these down to their exact two and a half inch width. And then what I'll do is set up a dado stack to cut out a rabbit along the edge of each of these boards. 
This is gonna be three quarters of an inch deep, just enough to hold those slats flush with the frame. A three quarter inch deep rabbit is pretty deep. That's a lot of material to remove in one pass. So I'd rather do this in two passes. I'll first pass will be just half of that depth and then I'll raise the blades up to their full depth. This will give me a cleaner cut and help prevent any tear out or splintering if I try to do this all at once. I'll bring out my router table again to cut a chamfer along the top edges of each of the frame pieces too. I'm gonna make this frame using my miter sled. This is a real simple jig. It's just a board with a couple of runners on the bottom and that slide into my miter slot. So the way this works is I've cut this fence or I've made this fence at an exact 90 degree angle so that whatever board is run through this way will match perfectly with whatever board is run this way. So what I've done here is I've marked the ends of each of these boards so I know which matches with which. So I've got A goes with A and then B to B and so on. So what I'll do is I'll take the part marked A, this will be one of the short sides, and I can run it through this way, like that. And then I'll take the mating piece A on the longer one, and I'll run it through on this side, just like that, and they'll match up perfectly. So this is just a one purpose tool. It's, all it does is it's set up to cut perfect miters, and I like to use it because there's less room for error than there is with my miter saw or using my miter gauge, which has maybe a little bit of wiggle to it. The only downside to using this is that there's these aren't long enough to set up any kind of meaningful stop block. So what I have to do is just cut these down a little bit at a time to make sure that they're the exact same length. And I can check this here and see how it works out. So there's no gap in between those, but the true test is it really a 90 degree angle. And it looks perfect. And here I'll match B up with B. So with these three pieces, what I can do is set this up here on that rabbit and line this up. So what I want to do is just get these miters set up to where they're going to be. Something like that. Let me put this over here to support it. Something like that. Okay, so I want this gap here also to be about an eighth of an inch, so I'll move it up to like there. I could use these as spacers. In fact, that'd be probably a good idea. So this mat is gonna be held in with these two end pieces, so I need to drill holes through the side of this. I could mark those. The steel rod is 3 16 of an inch diameter, but I want these holes to be bigger, so I've installed a quarter inch bit into my drill. And I'm setting up a depth stop on my drill press so that it'll stop at about an inch deep, a little bit deeper than the, how far those rods stick out on the end. I 
guess first I'll just drop those in. That looks good. Set it on there. Spacer. Oh yeah. Okay. That looks really good. So the idea here is that those holes, since they're a little bit bigger, this has room to move a little bit so it'll fit in there and it has a little bit of room up and down so it's not, doesn't have to be an exact fit. I'll do the other side the same way. Now what I can do is cut down those side pieces to where I get an exact fit with that eighth inch gap on the ends. Okay, well, I can give myself a starting point by, I know that this angle here needs to line up with this corner here. So I can just draw a line right about here. So what I want to do is make sure that I cut on this side of the line just so that it's oversized so I can keep cutting it down smaller and smaller until I get an exact fit. This is just kind of a tedious process of just being careful to shave a little bit off and then test it and then shave a little bit more off and test it. I just wanna be really careful that I don't cut these down too short. If I do that, those miter joints aren't gonna to fit together tightly and there'll be a gap. All right, there's a good fit. So now I know this long side is the right size so I can cut this one down to its exact size just to match that. And then what I can do is just kind of reverse the process and do the two short sides the exact same way. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good fit for this side. Now I just have to match it on this last piece. Okay, moment of truth. You know what I wanna do? I'm gonna clamp this together. The miters fit really nicely. There's a little bit of play in this middle. See there? But I think that's okay. That looks pretty good. I'll assemble the entire project using eight pocket screws, two in each corner.
Anytime I build a project using pocket screws, there's always a certain number of people who love to tell me how pocket hole joinery will never be strong enough to hold any project together for any period of time. So this is the first doormat I made, the exact same way I'm making this doormat, and I used pocket screws in each corner, just like I'm doing this time. I built this 12 years ago, and it sat at my front door with people walking on it multiple times a day, every single day. I mean, aside from the fact that I made some pretty crappy miter joints back in 2011, this thing is holding up just as sturdy as the day I made it. I'm sure I could get many more years out of this. By the way, if you notice, I labeled the ends of each of those boards just so I make sure that that A still lines up with A and B with B.